Hello, fine people of YouTube. Hardworker12 here. Taking a ride in my old Saab today and going to talk about a um, topic that I'm very familiar with. Being upside down in a car. Not upside down in this one because I have the title, but I am upside down in the other two cars that I have. And I don't care because I'm not trying to get rid of either of them. Uh, I've been a car salesman since 2006. So I have dealt with many customers uh, who are upside down in their cars. The upside down, tanked, buried, in it left, in it wrong, whatever you want to call it, you owe more on this car than what it's worth and you want to trade it in and try to get something new. Um, and this can be a problem if you are really upside down. Let's say you're you know, $10,000, your car's worth 10 and you owe 20. Let's use that as a baseline because that's pretty upside down. So there's a few reasons why you might want to get rid of it. Uh, first and foremost, the people that play what I call car musical chairs. I had one of these in my dealership a few weeks ago. Um, they had like a six month old Jeep Cherokee 2018 model. They had traded something else in that they were upside down for that and now they want to get out of the Cherokee and they wanted a pretty new model that we don't discount that much, no rebates on it. And they wanted the same payment and they had no money down. No, not gonna work. So if that's your situation, all I can tell you is good luck. Um, people wanna trade their upside down cars in for other reasons. You just, lifestyle change. You have a Camaro, two doors, and you just had a baby and the Camaro's not working with the car seats and the strollers and everything else that a baby entails need a four-door car totally understandable maybe you just got a new job now you have a long commute you drive a big pickup truck gas is killing you understandable the the people I feel the worst for is if they're upside down in in a car that's older out of warranty and it's had a major malfunction transmissions gone it's gonna take five thousand dollars to fix it you don't have the five thousand dollars you need a new car okay I am going to show you how you can get yourself into a new car and there is uh, go ahead and cross ladies and there is a little bit of an art form to this um, as a salesperson I've dealt with these people many times and the first thing I think is I need to find a car that I can bury this person's inequity into and still make the loan make sense so why am I thinking this way the reason why a bank will give you a lower interest rate on a car loan or a home loan than they would on say a credit card is because a car loan or a home loan is considered collateralized debt. So what that means is if you get a car loan and you don't make your payments, the bank can go repo the car and they have something that they can take to auction and try to recoup you know, the outstanding balance on the loan. Um, they can't do this with a credit card because all the steak dinners and tickets to Disneyland you bought, they're never getting back. So that's why your car loan, your home loan is going to give you a much lower interest rate than a credit card. Uh, with that being said, there's a limit to what a bank will loan on a car. So let's say you have a $30,000 MSRP new car. Some banks base loan to value on MSRP, some base it on invoice. Just to keep things simple, we're gonna base it on MSRP of $30,000. Typically, somewhere between 120 to 130% of MSRP is what a bank is going to loan you. Again, depending on your credit rating. This is based on having good credit. So, let's say you can get 130% on a $30,000 car. You can borrow $39,000 against this car. Well, you add in tax, license, registration, plus the $10,000 that you're upside down, we're over the limit. And this is kind of a best case scenario because some people will not qualify for 130% loan to value. Um, so how can we get around this? A uh, couple of different tips. First of all, if you have access to a credit union, if you're already a member of a credit union, or if you can become a member of a credit union, do that and try to arrange auto financing through the credit union. The reason why I say this is that in my experience, credit unions will often extend a higher LTV. They may be more willing to give you that 130%, 140% 
that you need or you know if your credit rating is below 700 they might be willing to at least give you 110 or 115 percent um, when a regular bank would be less likely to do so so try to become a member of a credit union do your research on your financing that may help you get out of where you are uh, another tip and this is what I think about when I'm faced with this situation and I need to find something that I can put somebody into is you have to pick the right card. You can't be that picky. I'm sorry. I'm sure in your mind I'm going to trade in this bucket that I'm buried in and I'm going to get X. I understand. Everybody has what they want. I get it. The problem is it may not be feasible um, simply because, you know, if you're looking at a new hot model, might not have the rebates, might not have the discounts that you're gonna to need to get that sale price low enough to absorb the inequity, which is why, again, when I'm faced with this situation on the lot, I'm thinking, what car do I have that I can put this person in? What programs do I have from the manufacturer that I can make this work with? Sometimes it's a used car, but used cars are really hit and miss. Um, it, it's really down to the individual car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on my computer and I'm going to show you how you can find a car that you can unbury yourself with, that you'll be able to get a new car, get something that'll hopefully work better for your lifestyle or something that runs if you're just in a car right now that's jacked up and isn't running and you don't have the money to fix it and you just want something else. Um, I'm going to show you how to find that. So let's go home and get on a computer. Okay, so I'm back home and I'm on my computer and I'm looking for cars, which is one of my favorite things to do. So if you're looking for a car that you can unbury yourself with, that you can use to help absorb your negative equity, my first tip is to look at American cars. The reason why I say this is as a rule of thumb, American cars, some of their models are going to typically carry higher rebates specifically and discounts um, that are going to help you unbury yourself out of your current car. Now, as I record this, it's January 10th of 2019, and now is actually a really good time to try to get yourself out of your car. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, right now, this uh, dealer, which is LA Motor World, still has 152 2018 models left. So let's see what they've got. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the very first one, new 2018 Jeep Renegade. MSRP on this car is 26,910. They've got it down to 19,995 with various rebates and discounts. Um, it looks like you will have to finance through Chrysler Capital uh, to get one of them, which may not necessarily be a bad thing. But here you go. You're looking at a total savings of $6,915 on this car off of the original MSRP. So if you're $10,000 buried, well, there you go. Right there, uh, you're taking care of almost $7,000 of it. And with a pretty low down payment, maybe $1,000 to $2,000, you could probably put yourself into this car assuming that your credit was okay. Not perfect, but okay. Um, let's see what else they have. I'm sure they've got something else that would work. Let's look at chargers, since I love Dodge Chargers. Here we go. This will this will be good. Okay. So similar savings here to the Renegade that we just looked at. The difference is this is a more expensive car. Uh, the more expensive the car, the more inequity you could bury into it. If you look at an MSRP of $38,000 and you're talking about 130% of that, you know, you're getting close to $50,000 that you could possibly finance on this car assuming you had good credit. Um, so with a net price of $31,245 with $10,000 in equity, even with zero down, you're well under where you would need to be potentially to finance this car. Um, if you do go this route, let me just give you a, a quick piece of advice. Please buy gap insurance. What gap insurance does is if you total the car and your insurance company deems it to be worth less than what you owe on it, which they certainly would in this case, um, the gap insurance covers the, the, the delta, the balance of what you owe on the loan. 
So you're going to save yourself some consternation there if, God forbid, the car gets totaled. Also, consider buying an extended warranty because you don't want to end up in the position, especially if you go with long-term financing five, six, seven years down the road, um, where you have a major failure on the vehicle, engine, transmission, something blows up, and you don't have a warranty to fix it, and you're right back where you started being upside down in a car that's not worth anything that you still owe money on. So at least consider an extended warranty that will cover the term of the loan, however many years the loan is. Um, let's go look at Fords and see if we can find something. This is Theodore Robbins Ford, which is the Ford dealer in beautiful Costa Mesa. We'll look at new vehicle inventory. And we are going to scroll down once again. I'm looking at 2018s right now. They even have a 17. <laughs> Talk about being buried. They're buried in that. I'm focusing on the 2018 model cars right now because that's what's out there. If you're watching this video in June or July, you can do the exact same thing I'm doing. Just look at current model year cars and try to figure out what has the rebates on it. Look at different dealer websites. Um, some dealers do post rebates and discounts and things. Others don't. So shop around. Uh, let's see what we have. Let's look at sedans. Sedans right now are not selling as well as SUVs and trucks. So, okay, so here's one. Uh, this is a Fiesta. And this car has a pretty, pretty hefty rebate considering its price. Uh, 17405 MSRP gives us a low 13339 sale price. But don't get confused here because this might not actually help us. If we're $10,000 upside down and we don't have a lot of down payment, you got to think about loan to value. So the loan to value, you know, the maximum amount financed on this car, if you're looking at 130% of 17405, 17405 times 1.3, you're going to finance about $22,600 on this car. This isn't going to help us get out of our upside downness because we got to apply tax and everything else. So unless you got a little bit of money down, this isn't a good way to go. That's a mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to get out of a car that they're buried in. They think if they go with a cheaper car, it's going to work out better. Sometimes it's actually the opposite. You need a more expensive car to absorb the inequity. Let's look at this. Ford Taurus. Bingo. This is, this is what you're looking for. Uh, 35,000 MSRP car for 25,999. You're looking at over $9,000 worth of discounts and rebates here. So if you're 10 grand buried, done. That wipes you out. And this is a car that you can get into, you can drive, and hopefully will work for you as far as your lifestyle, whatever it is. This is the sort of thing you're looking for. But you're saying, I don't really want an American car. I don't want a Ford Taurus. I don't want a Jeep Renegade. Okay, I have one more outside of the box idea for you. BMW. Um, oh, wow, Javier Duran is working. I know this guy. He's a good guy. We went to Texas together once. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. This is Crevier BMW. Crevier BMW is the largest volume BMW dealer in the U.S. And what you're going to want to do if you're looking at BMW is go to CPO Specials. Let's see if this brings me where I want to be. Perfect. Okay. This is what you're looking for. Previous courtesy vehicle. Okay. So what these cars are is these are service loaners. This is BMW had a 2018 X1, Crevier BMW, had a 2018 X1 in their inventory. They essentially sold it to themselves and they used it as a service loaner. So they gave it to people. If you bring your BMW for an oil change or warranty repair, they give you a car to drive. Now, the beautiful thing about these is you can still utilize new car programs on um, a service loaner. So what you want to try to do here is potentially do a lease. Now, this X1 probably had an original MSRP of around $38,000. They got a sale price on it of $29,988. So you're already looking at $8,000 below the original MSRP, but BMW Financial will let you use the original MSRP for loan-to-value purposes. So again, we can bury 10 grand into this car if we need to, and you can do it on a lease. 
Now, I'm going to tell you right now, don't get excited. You are not going to qualify for this 228 per month if you have inequity that you're rolling in, because I'm sure this requires some down payment and blah, 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 blah. But if you go into this and you lease this car and you can afford the payment for three years, because this is a 36-month lease right here, um, you'll be done. You'll be out of it. Your inequity will be gone. You know, you can lease return the car, get something else, do whatever you need to do. So uh, Mercedes, I think, also runs a similar program. I only know the details of BMW's programs because I sold BMWs for a while. So that's why I'm familiar with this. But uh, you may be able to do the same thing with a Mercedes. So that could be something to look into. And, you know, this is a small SUV. Uh, four doors could work as a family car if you don't have too many kids. Potentially, it could work as a commuter because the gas mileage isn't bad. You know, 32 on the highway, not terrible. Um, and they have cars that get better mileage. You could do a 3 Series and get higher MPG. Uh, and this car's got less than 5,000 miles on it, still under warranty. So this is a potential way that you might go as well. Um, look at a BMW service loan or lease. See if Mercedes-Benz does it similar. They probably do because the Germans just copy each other. Um, Audi doesn't do it this way because Audi's Audi is Audi. They're different. Um, but anyway, this is what you need to do. You need to find a car that that will work for you, that you can live with, that you can bury this inequity into. So if, if it's some American car with a big rebate, you know, uh, a service loaner BMW, a service loaner Mercedes, or, you know, who knows, a leftover car on a Toyota lot, something like that, that they can discount significantly to put you where you want to be. Um, that's what you need to find. If you're upside down, you don't have a lot of money down and you need a new car. Um, so that's my advice to you. I hope you found this video to be helpful. I really do appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you could subscribe or leave a like or a comment, I would appreciate it. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.